I have just concluded a productive meeting and lunch with Prime Minister Trudeau and the other representatives of the Canadian government. There's no country for whom the people of the United States feel a deeper affection than your own, Mr. Prime Minister, and I'm particularly pleased that you and your colleagues were able to come at this time. Our talks touched on a number of issues of mutual concern to the people of our two countries. We discussed our search for solutions to economic problems facing Canada and the United States, as well as the less fortunate countries, and our efforts to achieve peace and security throughout the world. We also examined several pressing bilateral issues. I'm pleased that we continue to approach these areas of common concern in a cooperative spirit based on our shared democratic values and traditions. The Prime Minister and I agree that Challenges also present opportunities and can be used as stepping stones toward a secure and prosperous world that we both seek. Much of our discussion today focused on the upcoming Williamsburg Summit, and we agreed that this meeting comes at an opportune moment. The Western economies are pulling out of the serious recession, and we're seeking ways to ensure continued progress. The Prime Minister and I are confident of an open and free exchange at Williamsburg, that it will contribute to a better understanding and encourage the creative approaches for economic cooperation. We discuss the importance of resisting protectionist pressures and maintaining the open trade and investment policies that have served us so well. The issue of security was also a part of our discussions. I outlined the need to maintain effective deterrent force and to achieve real movement toward the reduction of nuclear weapons. The Prime Minister was supportive and emphasized Canada's earnest hope that the talks in Geneva will lead to a safer world. We also discussed the need for progress in strengthening measures to prevent nuclear proliferation, including the importance of having other supplier states adopt the comprehensive safeguards for export requirements. And this is the eighth time since taking office that I've had the pleasure of meeting with Prime Minister Trudeau, and as always, I welcomed his counsel. And I look forward to our future meetings and delighted to have you here again, Mr. Prime Minister. Great. Well, Mr. President, you have uh, set out the agenda of our talks uh, very thoroughly. I don't think I can add or subtract from it. I would, uh, perhaps following another, another track, suggest that on the uh, arrangements for Williamsburg, I was uh, particularly happy that you confirmed to me that you would be uh, determined, as you said you would be, to uh, ensure that the talks at Williamsburg were unstructured and uh, hopefully that uh, we won't be meeting in order to justify an agenda and a communique that other people had written for us beforehand, but that we would be meeting there much in the spirit that you and I have been meeting these past hours to really exchange ideas, to get to the bottom of our feelings so that we can contribute, and it would be the first time, I think, in a spontaneous way at these summits contribute to the building of a consensus rather than once again trying to talk in a way that said that uh, our Sherpas had prepared a consensus before and they wrote a communique and we were trying to live up to it. And that is what I find uh, very exciting about this, this coming Williamsburg summit, that uh, the uh, material arrangements that you are taking and your intentions as you express them to me uh, do lead me to hope that on economic matters first that we will really be asking each other questions and looking together for creative answers on the various problems you you mentioned uh, including the post most serious overriding problem of the world uh, trade and and payment system uh, including the effect of the huge third world debt now on our own coming prosperity. We too believe that uh, 
The economy has turned around, and it is our duty to make sure that at Williamsburg that that recovery is lasting and deep and not just another, uh, another hope in people's minds. You mentioned our discussions on security. I'm happy to repeat that, uh, that uh, the two-track policy, the NATO two-track policy, is being followed. I believe by your government, sir, and certainly by the other NATO governments, in that we are every bit as determined to make the, the effort to reduce the number and strength of the SS-20s, which are aimed at Western Europe, negotiations to get a reduction, or hopefully even the, the disappearance of those, as, uh, as are our efforts to uh, to ensure that the other track, the one of the deployment of the Pershing twos and of the uh, land-based cruise missiles, is followed. In other words, uh, I've been encouraged by the steps that uh, you've taken, Mr. President, in the past months when you proposed an interim solution different from the zero option, when you proposed a series of confidence-building measures, I think these are all initiatives which we need in NATO so that our people will understand that we want peace and that we're not determined to escalate any arms race. We're more determined to seek ways of reaching a lasting peace and that that is very much part of our politics. And as I say, I've felt encouraged by the steps that uh, your administration, sir, has taken in the last few weeks. I could go on, but I won't. Uh, I'll get a sunburn if I do. En français, en français, oh, attention. Eh bien, vous avez entendu le président dire les sujets de la discussion. Je voudrais simplement répéter que pour ma part, j'ai été encouragé parce que le président m'a dit sa, son intention, sa détermination d'avoir des des discussions à Williamsburg qui ne seraient pas structurées, où nous pourrions vraiment échanger des idées et construire ensemble un consensus en ce qui concerne les matières économiques, euh, premièrement, qui sont essentiellement le sujet principal de Williamsburg, mais qui concerneront également euh, le problème de la sécurité dans le monde et le désir collectif que nous avons de progresser vers une déescalade euh, du désarmement nucléaire. Voilà. L'espagnol, ahora? Non?